Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to what I'm going to call our Can't Wait to Get Back to Church online series with a whole bunch of other serieses in it. Coming to you from the office that's in the student center. Most of you have never seen this office because it's that door when you walk in that no one ever goes into. That's mostly because Pastor Richard uses it and it's the Spanish church's kind of storage slash office closet thing going on. And so in this video, we are going to start a new series. Um, what's your name? What is your name? And over the course of the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about possibly your name, possibly not your name, but we're going to be talking about the names of God, right? So we're going to um, spend the next few weeks uh, looking at different names and titles of God. There are over a hundred names that reference God in the Bible, whether it be I am, whether it be the general, whatever you want to call him. Um, there are so many names uh, that reference towards him. And there's a few that I want to point out over the next uh, few weeks. And so but I want to start with this. What does your name mean? I did a quick Google search of four names. Myself, my wife, Pastor Doug, and Pastor Janet. My name, um, if you do a qu quick Google search, uh, is a Greek name, and it means bearer of Christ. That's a pretty cool name. Uh, thank you, Mom and Dad, for that name. If you're watching, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, the English term of the name means one with Christ in his heart. So that's pretty cool. I like that name. I like my name. It's a cool name. Thank you. My wife's name means, it's an English name. It comes from, you know, you know, in, not English, not like, oh, it came from America. No, like English, like old English, like Britain, you know, old England, kind of old English. Um, it means court attendant. I don't know if that means like an actual court, like a judge, you know, a judge in his court. Or like a tennis court attendant. I'm not really sure. But my wife has a beautiful name and I love it. We got Pastor Doug's name, which is a Scottish name. And it actually means dark water. Yeah, his name means dark water. Believe me, I asked him for permission for this and he laughed at it. It was funny. And then we have Pastor Janet names, which uh, is, a, is, is in the Hebrew term means a gift from God. So that's a pretty cool name too. So what do you, here's what I want you to do. Go to Google, Google your name, find out what it means and post it in the comments below so we can figure out what your name means. But we're going to get started, jump into this. In Exodus chapter 17 verses 8 through 15, we read of a battle. We also read that Moses built an altar and he named that altar, the Lord is my banner. So get your Bibles, turn to Exodus chapter 17, verse 8, and let's read. Pause the video if you need to. It says, then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, choose for us men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand up on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, while Aaron and Hur held up his hands one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun and Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this as a memorial in a book and recite it in the ears of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called it and called the name of it, the Lord is my banner saying, A hand upon the throne of the Lord, and the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. The Hebrew term for the Lord is my banner is Jehovah Nisi. 
And that's a name that many people have used for God. They've called him Jehovah Lisi, the Lord is my banner. See, Israel didn't go into that battle with a trained army. They were a bunch of herdsmen, shepherds, guys who took care of the cattle. They were not experienced guys. They were just your run-of-the-mill, everyday dudes. Not only did they go into this battle with untrained men, they were trespassers traveling to a place that they hadn't been to in over 400 years with women, children, their herds, and all of their stuff. So they weren't battling the Amaleks to gain land or gain materials or gain herds or slaves or whatever the case may be at that time. They were fighting for, for, for survival. They were fighting for hope and they were fighting for a future. But the thing about the Israelites that no one else had at that time or in that area was that they didn't travel alone. The Bible said that at night they traveled by a pillar of fire and during the day they traveled by a cloud of smoke. They traveled with the very presence of God. See, Israel never fought a battle as an underdog, no matter how few numbers they had or how untrained they were because they had God on their side. And as we read that story, we read that the two armies were lined up facing each other and the war cries went out and they ran into battle with one another as Moses, Aaron, and Hur overlooked from the hillside. As they rushed together in the battle, Moses raised his hand and as his hand was raised, Israel was winning, right? They were pushing back the Am Amalekites. So here's what I want you to do for the rest of this video and I want you to, at the end, Comment how long you're able to do it. Raise your hands and see how long you can hold them up in the air. Okay? And then comment how long you were able to. Let's see who can who is able to hold them up the longest. But as Moses grew tired, his arms lowered, right? They got lower because <laughs> he got tired. You ever raise your hands up for that long? Y'all's about to find out. And when that happened, the Amicalites took the upper hand. So Aaron and Hur, they they kept they were the ones that kept his arm, arms raised. They stood on each side and held an arm up high so that Israel could be victorious. And did I mention, this was their first battle. This wasn't their second or third. This was their first battle that they've gone into for the survival of their people. So they wouldn't be wiped out or sold into slavery. Right? This was their first battle, and they won. So that was a day to celebrate because God was with them, and he proved to come that he was able to come through for them. You know, there's so many other ser sermons that I could grab, lessons that, I, we could, that, that could be taught from just this one little portion of Scripture. It's so jam-packed with good stuff. But in this video, why Jehovah Nisi? Why did Moses call it the Lord is my banner? Why build an altar for that? What does it mean for God to be our banner? What does it mean for God to be our banner? Well, let's consider how banners are used, right? So banners are raised to celebrate and honor, right? That's one way they're used. We think of, have you ever been to AT&T Center and seen all the championship banners from, at the, from the Spurs? Or or have you seen the banners of their jerseys because they're, they've been retired? You know, most recent, Tim Duncan, Manu, Parker, they've all been retired jerseys as Spurs, right? Or retired numbers. But they have banners up to celebrate and honor, correct? All right, so that's one way they can be used. They honor, used banners are used to honor soldiers, they're used to celebrate occasions or people. They're used for holidays, right? They're banner, we see banners all over the place. Next time you go out for a drive, look to see how many peepers have, people have a banner somewhere, right? Typically, most years we have a banner sitting out next to the road that's talking about VBS. Or, or we typically have a banner that talks about the day school. Come join our day school, right? There are also labels that people recognize to show a location or an identity, Right? People hang banners up outside to show like, hey, th this is, th we're here. We're here, y'all. This is us. Right? Or an identity. Hey, we're Shift. Let's go. Or we're CT Church. This is us. 
Another thing that banners, banners are raised to celebrate and honor, but they're also made to be visible. Banners are made, the whole point of a banner is to be seen. Banners are for, for the people that raise them out of celebration, remembrance, or an announcement, right? That's what a banner is for. It's be seen. So people are celebrating and they want everyone to know. There's They're remembering someone. There's an announcement they have to make. Banners are also for those who see them, right? It's an invitation. It's a summon. It's, an, it's a call. They attract people. You know, y'all ever seen that sign? Do you think billboards don't work? Just did. Banners are meant to be seen. They're meant to announce. They're meant to celebrate. They're meant to be inviting, right? So if you consider what a banner is used for, you may begin to understand how God is our banner, how God is Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. He's my announcement. He's my invitation. God is our banner, and I have a whole list of God is our banner because. God is our banner because we live to celebrate and honor his faithfulness. God is our banner because we see the rising sun every day in the sun setting. God is our banner because of the risen Savior that we serve in Jesus. He's our banner because we remember his deeds for us that we find in his word. God's our banner because he gives us identity as God's children, right? Because of Jesus' sacrifice, we have an identity as a child of God. God's our banner because we are his representatives to the world, showing his mercy. He's our banner because he, he is an invitation, and he's a statement of who we belong to. As Moses created the altar, the Lord is my banner. And he called it that. He called it Jehovah Nisi. All right. And it was written on this altar. He was creating a place of remembrance, a place of celebration, a place of victory and an expression of thanks. The Lord is my banner. He is my banner. And I'm the Lord's. So I ask this question, is the Lord your banner? Is he your banner? Is he your declaration? Whether it be a declaration and you're inviting someone or whether it be a declaration of victory or celebration or remembrance or announcement, whatever it may be, is the Lord your banner today? Is he Jehovah Nisi in your life? And if he's not, I just want to ask you to pause this video and say a simple prayer and just ask God that he be your banner. Whatever your banner may be saying, ask him to be your banner. Whether it's a banner of victory, whether it's a banner of saying, I am a child of God, whether it's a banner of saying, I lived a past life and God's got more for me going this way, a banner of celebration, the Lord is my banner. Let me pray over you. Let me pray over you. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to still share. I thank you that you're so good. And I, th I thank you that there's, there's so many things that we could write on our banner. There's so many things that we could, we, could, we could take a poster and we can write how you are our banner, Lord. God, I just ask that you begin to open up our hearts, Lord, open up our minds and reveal to us how you have become and you are our banner. Whether it be a declaration of victory, whether it be an identity that um, we're declaring, Lord, I just, I just ask that you make yourself so real to us during this time. Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hey guys, we love y'all. Here's what I want to see y'all do. That's what I think would be really, really cool. Let's take poster boards and let's make them our banner. Yeah, you can cut them into rectangles. You can leave it as a poster board, but take it and make it your banner. Write Jehovah Nisi. Write the Lord is my banner. And write your declaration. Write your identity. Write your independence. Write your victory. Your announcement. Whatever it may be.
So let's make some banners, post them to Instagram. We love you guys. Later.